Eric Zabel, alors qu'il sortait des ronds amateurs, et on peut dire qu'à 28 ans, eh bien, Julien Castel obtient véritablement la consécration. Donc, il se trouve que la famille vient en région, la presse en France, la télé, 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 la You got audio? All right, five, four, three. Five, four, three, two, one. Hi, I'm Jason Sumner with Velo News Television, and we're back here with Chris Horner at the start of stage two of the 2006 Tour de France in Obernai. Chris, first, let's just talk about yesterday and, and what happened for you and the team. Yeah, it was a good day for us, more or less. We just, uh, Robbie got a little blocked in there at the finish, tried to make up a little bit of ground, came up a little bit short. I think a couple meters further might be a different story, but that's that's bike sprinting, and it was a crazy finish there when we came into it. If you saw, no one really had a train left. Uh, Boonen was without a train, so he got stuck at the front too far to go, and started to go back down, and then started back up, and it was already over by then from Jimmy Casper coming around on the left. Okay, let's fast forward to today. Today's another possible sprint stage but a little definitely a harder stage i think there's four rated climbs obviously your team's goal is going to be to keep it together but that may be easier said than done yeah almost 130k stage today so it's really long also coming into the finish we got at least two good bu two good bumps if not three so it will possibly be a little bit thinner but i think with the quality of the sprinters we have in this field i don't think you're going to get rid of them on just two climbs of about 3k so that's not going to quite be enough it should still be a field sprint today is there a chance if it does break up that you could be a, you know you're the kind of guy who could maybe go up a road and go up the road in a stage like this and and sneak away i mean this seems like it could be a stage carbon or well made for you. Yeah, team tactics are pretty simple for a sprinter team like ours is if the group's bigger than eight, we want somebody in it. It's my job to cover with three other guys from the team to be in that, something of that size or more. And then I'll have a free ride to sit on because we have Robbie, so I won't be working in the break. Okay, fair enough. Lastly, let's talk, yesterday Thor Hushovd gets tagged by one of these things, one of these sponsor <laughs> hands, and uh, gruesome scene at the finish line. He's there lying on the ground, blood squirting everywhere. I don't know if you saw Oscar Frere. The guy looked like he was a bit player in a horror movie at the finish because he had got Hussau's blood all over him. Have you ever, I'm surely in your days of racing, have encountered, you know, these things, something like this, got it caught up in a wheel. It's kind of, it gets a little crazy out there. Yeah, it does get a little crazy. The fans are sticking a little bit too far out. I mean, it, you would think it's common sense that when the barrier is up is you don't want to necessarily be reaching over. It's, it's difficult enough even when they're leaning over because you got to remember the, the, the wheel is, at a, is right to the barrier, so your bars are going to be almost over the barrier or on the barriers at times. So when the fans are leaning over, they're sticking out there. You throw that little thing in here, and that's that's another foot and a half right there sticking out on top of someone's foot and a half arm. You got three feet sticking out from the barriers, and that's one hell of a paper cut. Yeah, yeah, that thing packs a punch at 40, 40 miles an hour. Absolutely. Okay, that'll wrap it up for today's version of the Chris Horner Diary. Stay tuned for more from the Tour de France. Thanks, Chris. Cool. Yeah. 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 Tell me the ball uh, into the bus a few minutes ago. What did he say to you? you no, know, he just excused uh, what's happened. Uh, but I mean, uh, it's not his fault or it's not the fault of PMU. It's just like things happen. The people getting excited when they see us coming. And, uh, Should there be more more fences, uh, more high fences, for instance? I don't know. Uh, I mean, something uh, they should do because people they want to, for example, take photos and then they just put an arm out and uh, put a, uh, the camera. And uh, I mean, when we coming 70k an hour is dangerous, but. Yep. Will you be able to take part in, in this point today? Uh, I don't know. I have a really sore arm. I can't really 
I can move it, but uh, maybe when when I'm getting warm, it's getting better. I hope so. What was your mentally situation yesterday? I mean, it's bad. I lost the yellow jersey. I lost the green jersey. Uh, I lost the points for the green jersey. And, but I mean, uh, it's not over. So we we'll see what's happened. Still, still long way to go. So, how do you feel about it? Yes, it's going. Ça va, mais pas super. Bien sûr, j'ai très mal au bord, mais j'espère que ça va aller mieux quand je, je suis un peu chaud. Oui. Est-ce que psychologiquement, pour un, un sprint ce, cet après-midi, ça, ça va changer les choses, le fait de votre accident hier oh, Je ne pense pas, mais d'abord, il faut que je vois si j'ai pu faire une sprint, parce que maintenant, je ne peux presque pas bouger les bras. Mais on va voir quand je pense que je vois la ligne d'arrivée, ça, ça va tout oublier, super. Donc, vous avez eu peur hier, c'était quand même très spectaculaire. Oui, bien sûr, je suis très peur parce que j'ai vu le sang. Uh, I just heard somebody said at first I hit a camera and then I hit the the, the green uh, PMU uh, hand uh, and I think that's the the hand that was cut my arm. Yeah. yeah. What was the first thing you saw? Just blood shooting out of your arm? No, first I just had pain, but when I passed the finish line, when I saw down, I saw like heaps of blood, mm -hmm. and it was like pumping out quite fast. So like, I got quite scared from the start. They asked you. Le LeBlanc came and visited you. Did you just recount that conversation. Yeah, I mean, he just wanted to apologize what's happened and uh, said he wanted to do something with it. And uh, yeah, I think that will change a few things in the future. Okay, do you, are you going to be all right from here forward? Is it kind of wait and see? I had to wait and see, but I mean, now it's hard. Uh, I just have pain when I moved arm, but I think or we'll hope it's going to be better when I get warm. Yeah. How many stitches? Uh, I got three. Yeah. Is it and it's definitely in pain now? Do you have to take anything or anything? Yeah, I have to. Uh, I took some painkillers, so I hope that's going to help. <laughs> Thanks. What's that? How did they treat you in the hospital? No, I uh, I got like three stitches and some uh, strips to keep it together. But uh, no, they they that was going well, and uh, yeah, we see. Obviously, you're not able to sprint 100 percent. No, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I've, I, now I can hardly move my arm. But uh, but I know I just hope it's getting better when I'm getting warm. But. Uh, I don't know. I have to see. Um, I mean, if I can't sprint, it's. I'm just happy that I'm still here and can ride and can always be worse. What do the doctors say? Is it gonna be better? Yeah, for sure it's gonna be better. But uh, he just say uh, I have to see how my arms feels and uh, and then just take by day by day. You're three points behind now for the green jersey, but that's not on your mind right now. No, it's not. Uh, I mean, that's not the, my biggest problem. Uh, I just want to come back in good form when I can sprint 100% and uh, and then like may hopefully get a, another stage win. Two seconds behind in GC. Yellow is still not far away. No, it's not. I still have it on my mind, so I want to come back. You know, like yesterday it was really hot, but uh, you know, we're all used to it too, and you know, I've done it a few times now. And, uh, as long as it's not as hot as 2003, we'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Man. Thanks, man. That's a lot. Thank you. I actually slept pretty good. Um, as I said before, I was really disappointed after the fr first stage, and yesterday made it, made it all, um, all that disappointment go away, and I was very relaxed and just really happy to finally get a yellow jersey. Johan's called this a tour of opportunity. It looked like on the road yesterday, you were the first to seize it by the reins. What sort of message do you think that is sent to the rest of the peloton and really to your own team? Well, really, it's just uh, we just we got one of our ambitions to you know hold the yellow jersey. Yesterday or the first stage, we wanted the stage win. We missed that one, but we got the yellow jersey, and we're gonna try to hold on to it today. It's gonna be difficult with the sprinters, but if we lose it, we'll try to get it back uh, next week. I understand you got a call from Lance last night. What do you have to say? Yeah, he was at the park with his family, and uh, he called me up and said I look great in yellow, and he was really happy. All right, congratulations again. Thank you. Which plans to defend today? Well, we'll we'll try to hold on to it. Uh, as I said, it's going to be difficult with the sprinters. Uh, depends on what they do, and uh, I'm going to need a little luck to hold on to it. But it'd be great to have it for at least another day. You think you'll get cooperation from them? Well, yeah, for sure they're going to want a, a sprint at the end. But uh, if it's all together at the end, I don't, you know, I don't know if I'll be sprinting with them just because. It'd be, it'd be Back in the day, this was the kind of stage you could win. Yep. Belgian television George, how does it feel to carry a Lance Armstrong shirt on the shoulders? Uh, well, it feels great. Uh, obviously, it's Lance is gone, so we're we're here for our own results now, and I'm just happy to get my get my first yellow jersey. Did you hear from him yesterday? Yeah, he called and he was very happy. He said I looked great in yellow. And are you going to defend this jersey? 
We'll try. It's going to be hard to uh, to keep it from Bonin and Thor and McEwen, but uh, hopefully with a little luck we can hold on to it for another day. Does it give you kind of uh, authority? Are you new leader of the team now? Oh, I'm, I'm one of the leaders of the team, and uh, as I've said many times before, I don't really need to be called the leader of the team. I know what I'm here to do, and that's not going to change my objective at all. The objective is wearing this on the shelves every day? Well, obviously that's a big dream of mine. That would be the ultimate objective. Um, you know, I'm going to just try my best. George, does this all give you a new appreciation for what Lance did the last seven years, just being in this position that, that had so often been, you know, he had been in before? No, I've been there with him all seven years. I've gone through everything he has, so I, I know what, what he's gone through. <laughs> Johan, just one in English. Johan, just, just one in English. You, you talked about how you were... You talked the other day about how you were sort of happy that that you know the bodyguard, bodyguard. <laughs> the team wouldn't be in the in the role of sort of being in charge of this race yet here you are on the third day with the yellow jersey. Talk about that. Well, I think that's the proof, you know, that uh, I've said uh, before the race that this was going to be for us. Um, a Tour de France of opportunities and, and going after every opportunity and what happened yesterday was was a great example of, uh, of what I said it was not even something we talked about or we, we thought about or we planned for and it just happened because George saw that opportunity at the right moment he went for the sprint and then he had to wait for the result of the, of the final sprint to see if uh, Bonin or Husoft uh, wasn't winning the stage or not in the top three. And it all happened. And I think it's just uh, a good example of uh, the way we are doing this race and uh, whatever opportunity we get, we will, we will take it. So often Lance has been the one in the spotlight today. It's George, how's he handling it? Good, he's relaxed, you know, it's not, uh, it's, it's gr what happens to him is great. It's not something, you know, he's in a completely different spot than Lance. When Lance had the jersey, we, uh, number one, we, we, if we took it early, we immediately decided uh, to give it away because we didn't want the team to work. Now, uh, George has a jersey. doesn't mean that we will defend it no matter what, but if we can keep it one more day, we will try to keep it one more day because who knows what tomorrow brings. Imagine today is a day when there's a pretty good chance that you will be able to keep it. It depends, you know. I mean, if, uh, if it stays all together and Bonin wins the stage, he, he takes it. If McEwen wins the stage, he takes it. If Benati wins the stage, he takes it. If Husov takes one bonification sprint, he takes it. So there's a lot of uh, candidates still for the jersey. Okay, thanks. That's Johan Bernil, Discovery Channel Team Director. Hi, we're with Christian Henn, Team Director of Gerl Steiner. Christian, just start out, kind of characterize what you, your feelings are of this race after two days. Yeah, for us, for Team Gerolsteiner, it was perfect the last two days. We had the fourth place with Sebastian Lang in, uh, in the prologue. Yesterday is a point jersey, hill climb jersey, red points with Fabian Wegmann. And today and tomorrow it's uh, difficult stages because we have hilly, uh, hilly parts and it's dangerous for a breakaway with a lot of riders, maybe 20 riders, 15 riders and then it's sure there are two or three riders dangerous for Levi. Okay. It, do you anticipate Discovery will try to defend the jersey? Discovery, I think, is uh, one of the strongest team. It's the strongest team, and they have, for this situation, for the breakaways, three or four riders. They can stay in. It's it's uh, Savodeli, it's Hinkepi, it's Popovic, and. That makes dangerous for us. Great. Christian, thanks very much.
just try uh, Levi. I put literally tiny, tiny. Yeah. Uh, I'll let you know after you get it. Baby, show no one. Baby, show no one else. It hasn't really unfolded very much, so it's only one day. Just take it day by day, and uh, we'll see. I think tomorrow could be dangerous, so we have to stay alert. Yeah, why do you say that? Uh, well, because I don't think the sprinters will be so confident with the finish, so I don't know if they're going to want to control, and uh, you know that means that uh, potentially a breakaway could go, and, and potentially a dangerous rider could be in it. So, Do you anticipate Discovery to put a full-hearted effort into defending the yellow jersey? No, no, definitely not. Why not? No reason to. When do you think, when, do, when does things get really important for you? I mean, you have to sort of be diligent for a while, but then I guess it's the first time trial is when things are really going to get important. Yeah, every day is important, you know, uh, but obviously I have to perform in the time trial, and then when the mountains come, I have to perform there. So, How do you feel about what happened the day before the tour started? Well, it's, it's not good for cycling, uh, you know, maybe short term but I think in the long run it, it can be good as long as T-Mobile and CSC can can uh, can see past it and, and see for the future and, and see that the sport has made huge gains more gains than any other sport in the world and and uh, you know I hope CSC T-Mobile I hope they stay with the sport because I you know their support has been uh, has been a big big part of uh, cycling in the last few years. So was it fair that those riders were thrown out with? I mean, it's, it wouldn't call it damning evidence. It's you know strong circumstantial. But was it? Do you think that was fair? Well, I, I don't know all the evidence, and uh, I would I would think that uh, you know the tour wouldn't want to risk any backlash if it wasn't uh, something substantial. But you know, like I said, I'm not. I don't have the the. The file in my hands. I don't know exactly what the evidence is. So, thank you. It puts more responsibility on on me and my team, but I think that we're just going to stay calm and take it day by day. How about uh, in terms of um, you said yeah, tomorrow was uh, dangerous because the sprinters wouldn't want to go, but you also talked to me once about. It's there's some narrow roads going through some villages with overhangs and that kind of thing. Is that, is that tomorrow that you had mentioned? That there was some dangerous cornering in one of the early stages? Was it tomorrow stage three that you had mentioned that? or my, uh, the, I don't remember okay. saying that, but um, yeah, Holland is known for small roads and, and a lot of obstacles in the road, even more so than France, so uh, it could be dangerous. I hope that they picked uh, Tour de France roads and not Amstel Gold roads. Okay. and I, I almost crashed also, I hit the barriers but I didn't see it. Yeah, a tough day out there, looks like the heat definitely must have been hard on you. Yeah, it has been really, really hard. Uh, my computer uh, was all the time between 90 and 99 Fahrenheit, so that means 36 or something like that. Yeah. Has been really, really hard. Also the final with uh, all those climbs and we were riding pretty fast, so 
just two stages, but the legs still uh, already have the the feelings. Yeah, not not real disappointed to lose a jersey on a day like today. It's it's bigger fish to fry down the road. No, no disappointment. Uh, it was nice to have it one day. Uh, George was he's really motivated and he was really happy. But I think that uh, with his condition, maybe the jersey is is coming back in uh, in the next days. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks. Au maillot vert du classement par points, le bonheur de Robbie McEwen. Voilà, félicité par Bernard Hino, par son Altesse Royale, le Grand Duc Henri, ensuite par Madame Lydia Mouch, députée Merdèche sur Alzette, Jeannot Créquet, qui est ministre au sport du Grand Duché, Henri Intorcha et des chemins au sport de la ville d'Eche sur Alzette, et Thierry Garnier, donc directeur général des supermarchés champions. Du côté des partenaires, Jean-Michel Perrin pour Nestlé Waters, va le féliciter dans quelques instants. Et Émilie Moreau, invité LCL, Pascal Miric. Voilà, il y a après des moments de frayeur vécu hier et également il y a un instant sur la ligne d'arrivée, il retrouve le maillot jaune. Edsen, on applaudit le champion norvégien, Tour Eusoff. Nouveau maillot jaune donc de ce Tour de France, la troisième place obtenue dans l'étape du jour. Hier, il y a quelques-uns se demandaient, repartira-t-il Oui ou non Non seulement il est reparti, mais il est allé à la reconquête donc du maillot jaune. Edsen, voilà pour le corps norvégien de l'équipe euh, de Roger Le Gélé, l'équipe de Grigol, à la première place du classement général. Je... Obviously, big day for the big day for the team. What was uh, what was kind of the game plan going in? Well, I tried to survive because the final was pretty hard. Um, but I think Fred did a good a good job with Robbie just to, to hang in there, and uh, he came with him with one K to go in the right position, position, and then uh, from there on, he did really a great spin from from head on. From uh, your vantage point, what did you see? There was, uh, there was a pretty big pile up, maybe about a K and a half to go. Did you, did you see any of that? Well, I saw the crash, but uh, I don't know who was involved or uh, anyone, nobody from us, uh, not Cadell. It's what do you tell your guys on days like today? It's just, you know, it's pretty dangerous out there sometimes. Well, that's a tour. It's, uh, every day it's dangerous for, uh, dangerous in a little corner in the tour. So uh, you can't tell them it's dangerous. They know. Okay. Obviously, goals to get Robbie and Green all the way to the end. Well, the first thing was to to try to win the stage. Yesterday it went just wrong, but today it was it was there. And Green comes with victories. Uh, I think the the guys who were second and third today lost a lot of energy in the in the sprints during the race, and he took. Uh, final victory and that's the most important one. Your team is one of the few teams here that has dueling yellow and green interests. How, what's the difference for your team and maybe it's more of a stress on your team? Uh, yes, but one goal is already uh, achieved now. Uh, we're gonna go for other ones, but we have uh, other teams working with the same goals. So uh, comparing with last year, we were still chasing with quick step alone. Now we have Lamprey, uh, Millerams, uh, so we can save a few guys from there so we always put two riders a day and uh, other team does as well though it's good for us thanks very much he, uh, he tried to pass Sable and uh, make uh, and ready so he turned left yeah. and uh, quite fast and I didn't see it so I hit his my front wheel I think in his uh, in his uh, cycling shoes and, uh, and the, yeah I almost crashed and went down but uh, I mean that's that's the race that's uh, that's the sprint and. Uh, Are you going to try to defend the jersey now to Paris or? Uh, not to Paris, but <laughs> 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 that's not my goal. <laughs> no, I will try to defend it as long as possible. Uh, if it's t tomorrow, to the time run run we see. But uh, already now I'm happy. I had a good Tour de France. Thank you guys. For how did right. feel today? <coughs> Excuse me. How did the arm feel today? You were a little concerned about it this morning. Yeah, I was uh, I was scared this morning that uh, it could uh, that it didn't work or was painful. But uh, during the race, I was suffering a bit. But when I got warm and uh, when you get like motivated and want to do something, you forget uh, about the pain. And uh, so no, it wasn't too bad. So I think I'm back. Okay. Your perspective of that crash? Did you see any of it, or are you up in front of it? It's hard to tell. The crash yesterday? No, today. Oh yeah. Uh, no, that's that just happens in the sprint. You know, we always close, and uh, Robbie turned a bit left, and I didn't like see it, and I tried just 
try to want to pass him and uh, and I with my front wheel I think I hit his shoes so I almost went down that's that's what happened. Thanks. Yeah. Good there. This morning, Good there. Uh, you, you, could, you had trouble to even you couldn't even sign an yeah, autograph. Yeah. You looked in a lot of pain, but uh, well, you've, you've, track, you've recovered very well. Yeah, I mean, I had a, I had a sore arm and sore shoulder, and uh, but I mean, when you're sitting on a bike, it's it's okay. The weird thing is when you hit some uh, like some holes in the in the road. That's the baddest uh, thing. So what is the actual injury? Uh, uh, what damage was that? Oh, it's like a four or five centimeters long cut, and uh, but I think the. The thing is uh, painful, that's uh, the shock I got from my camera or something yesterday. So yeah. I'm quite uh, yellow and blue in my skin. Okay. I'm Russian. That's cool. Merci. de quelqu'un d'autre. Alors comment ça se fait que vous, vous êtes un sprinter Qu'est-ce qu'il faut, qu qu faut pour être un sprinter I actually don't have a clue what you just asked me because my French isn't that good. Can you ask me in English? Yes, in English. What's what, what's what is different in your body to win every time? Well, I think it's a combination of what's in your body and what's in your head. But uh, of course, the, the most important thing is the the fact that you can ride your bike at 70 kilometers an hour, but then it's uh, the rest is up here to, to do it at the right time and, and make the right decisions and, uh, and also have good help. Uh, are you silly to ride at uh, 16 kilometers, 60 kilometers in the, in the you finish line? You have to be crazy. <laughs> no, you have to be strong, you have to be smart, you have to know what you're doing and be confident. And that's what I am and that's why I win stages in the Tour de France. Who is the stronger on the finish line? Today I was, but tomorrow could be somebody else. Yesterday was Casper. Tomorrow could be Boone, and the next day could be Hushoff. Uh, it can be, it could be any of the guys here. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. uh, Robbie, just run through this. Please. Always is who's the strongest? <laughs> <laughs> like, boys, They're just like that, me, me neighbours. We fought, we fought, we fought, we fought it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Drink one on that one. <laughs> hey? just, oh, really yeah. Yeah. We love it, we love it. Give us a five. Robbie! 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 Oh, you love it. These are my neighbours. <laughs> they love it, neighbours. What do we say? <laughs> we love it! Russ has already lost his voice. <laughs> we fought security to get here in Korea. <laughs> so you want, we've got 500 They shouted me a beer before, they're good blokes. <laughs> yeah, bloody good. Listen, uh, yeah, just run us through the last uh, couple of cars. Oh, yeah. shit. Um, Going through the last couple of cars. Yeah. Let's see. I just with Rodriguez, uh, you know, we got over those small climbs in the final and there was just me and Freddie and you know, he's just checking, I was always with him and I just stuck to Freddie like glue and you know, basically Freddie knows he has to he has to almost ride like he's going to ride his own sprint and he has to get me in the right position and you know, today he did a, a lot of work in the wind in the last 2k and I just could follow him around and just, you know, I'd, I don't have to sort of even think for myself until I get into the last sort of 600 metres because Freddie just takes me all the way because he's, he's a good sprinter himself and he just he set me off in about seventh or eighth position uh, in the last K there and uh, I was sort of first next to Zabel, O'Grady was in his wheel so I just dropped back another one, I went in behind O'Grady 
Uh, I'd already seen Bonner was following me, um, and so was Hushoff. Uh, and then Zabel went, maybe, I don't know what it was, must have been 250, he just went for it. And uh, so I let, and uh, Grady went straight with him, so I just sort of let those two wind me up for the first sort of 50 metres. Um, and I just came straight out the wheel, and, and from there, just full gas to the line. But about a, a hundred or so out, I, I'm not sure how far, I felt something hit my foot. And um, so I tried to sort of pull back to the right a little bit because the road sort of curved around really lightly to the right. But the, the shortest way between two points is a straight line. That's what I was taking. And um, you know, I saw it just in the in the video after. It was Hussov got his front wheel against my foot. And then he was sort of waving his hand over the line. But we, we watched it together since then and it's no problem. If there was a problem in the Tour de France, they would have disqualified me. Look at last year. I've been careful. <laughs> Just made sure I didn't do anything wrong. Surprised Bronin hasn't played a bigger role in these sprints. Oh, the two to front push. sprints are, are hard. I mean, Bonin's really strong and really fast, and he's he's probably still going to win a stage. He might win two. He might win three. But you know, the, the tour is really difficult. It's not just about being the strongest. You've got to have sometimes that little bit of luck on your side, make the right decision at the right time. Everything's got to be perfect to win a tour stage. Well, is it possible you're getting uh, better? As, uh, Get older, I don't know if I'm getting better, but I'm not getting slower yet. <laughs> Can I ask you what do you think about uh, Tuhuza after yesterday? What happened? And now he's back in the yellow. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, Tua showed how, how strong a guy he is. I mean, he, he got his arm cut open yesterday. Mm. He was having trouble. I, I spoke to him at the start of the stage today. Mm. He was having trouble just holding the handlebars. But, mm. uh, you know, he's he showed he's, he's a fighter and he's a, a really strong guy. And, mm. you know, he just kept fighting on. He's got the yellow jersey back. Mm. Um, so, you know... Is not, that show, that's not, show not show? done with tour yet. No. Do you think they should ban those things? I mean, well, they really apparently I, I didn't, I wasn't, I mean, couldn't say I was looking. No, I didn't see any today, okay. but yeah, I mean, I had a problem like that in 2002, and they banned them, you know, for a few days after that, and then slowly but surely there they appeared again in the last kilometre. I think is, I mean, they can they can hand them out as long as they. I think the the best thing they can do and what they should do is set up a a double barrier. Um, I mean, they could put up really high ones like they do in Spain and in, in Italy, but you're sort of shutting the public off from the race then like you know, like uh, like criminals behind a high fence. I think what they should do is have the first barrier that's next to us and they should have a metre space and set another barrier. The, the public can then see just as much of the race, but they can't come in contact with the riders and you know, it's, it's safer for everybody. How many tour stages is that now? Nine. Nine. <laughs> Ooh, no, we loved. And so and you, didn't have, you didn't have a go in the uh, intermediate sprints, which you often don't do in the first week. No, I just just you know, left them for what they are. I mean, there were two guys out in front. There's only two points on offer each time. Um, I just wanted to save myself for the finish. I'm here to win stages, like I said at the start, and you know, I wasn't lying. I've, I'm here to win a stage, and now I've done it. I'm going to try and win another one. And uh, I just see how it goes day to day, and I'll, you know, I could decide spur of the moment to do an intermediate sprint or not, but I like the way it's going at the moment, so if it ain't broke, not don't fix it. Not bad for the second fastest spinner around, eh? Yeah, not too bad, eh? You were talking before about your body. Uh, what do you weigh? Uh, 68 kilo, uh, 1 meter 71, so 5 foot 7 and a bee's dick. Uh, uh, yeah. So where does that power come from? I mean, there's a lot of streets there. Could say something there. But... No, 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 no. <laughs> the road is a lobby's, lobby's surf club. I've seen But do you think you're strong enough to keep the green jersey all the way? I will see. I'll just keep fighting day to day for stage wins. And you know, if I'm doing that well, then I'll keep getting points towards the green jersey. <laughs> it's only a goal after after winning some stages. Yeah, yeah, I just want to keep trying to win stages. Yeah.